Hi, I'm Chris Perkins, and I'm the creative manager for Dungeons & Dragons. And if you're curious about D&D 4th Edition, then this video is for you. As you might already know, d and is a game you play with the aid of some dice, some miniatures, and books. But what really makes D&D special is that it's a game you play together with your friends. It's shared storytelling with lots of social interaction, both in the game and around the table. You and your friends play heroes, exploring a medieval fantasy world. Your goals are to complete quests, explore ancient ruins and dungeons, fight monsters, find treasure, and become more powerful. A typical D&D game has one dungeon master and several players, each of whom plays a hero in a group of adventurers. If you're a player, you get to build your own hero, your character, and for that you need the player's handbook. The player's handbook is where you'll find everything you need to build the character you want to play, starting with a selection of heroic races and classes. Fourth edition has several classic D&D races, like humans, dwarves, elves, as well as new races like the Dragonborn and the Tieflings. You've also got familiar character classes, such as the Cleric, the Fighter, the Wizard, the Rogue, along with new ones, including the Warlord and the Warlock. And every choice you make helps make your hero unique. They impact what your character can do, and they give you all kinds of options to use in combat as well as out. Having fun choices to make and cool options to choose from is what 4th edition is all about. Your hero is defined largely by the powers you choose, and Player's Handbook has an exciting array of them. There are three different kinds of powers. First are your at-will powers, which you can use as often as you want, like the first level wizard classic magic missile. Then you've got the encounter powers, which are a bit more powerful and can be used only once in a given encounter. For instance, the fighter has a seventh level power called Come and Get It, which lets him pull all of his enemies in close to him so he can whack them all with his sword. And then you've got your daily powers, your big guns that let you do spectacular things and mighty attacks, but you only get to use each of them just once in a given in-game day. For instance, the cleric has this really cool ninth level daily power called Flame Strike that lets him call down a massive column of fire to incinerate his foes. How you fit into the adventuring party is very important. When you're making a character, it helps to think about the party composition and what roles need to be filled. A classic D&D adventuring party, wizard, fighter, cleric, and rogue, has all the roles covered, but you and your friends can choose whatever classes you like to fill out your party roster. The Dungeon Master's main job is to build encounters that the players will enjoy by choosing the right monsters for the job. The Monster Manual contains nearly 500 creatures to populate your dungeons and adventures. Like 4th edition heroes, 4th edition monsters have different roles in combat. Artillery monsters, like the Beholder here, are generally fragile and prefer to attack at a distance, whereas a brute, like the Shambling Mound, gets in your face, soaks up a lot of damage, and tries to pound you to a pulp. And then we've got the Controller, in this case a Harpy, who is good at controlling the battlefield and moving things around. So, different monsters are dangerous in different ways, but because the monster manual gives the roles and tactics for each creature, the DM knows how they should fight, and that helps make encounters more interesting and challenging for the whole adventuring party. Every monster comes with a monster stat block that contains all the information you need to run it. They're all playable right out of the book and don't require any preparation to run. Now here is a sample encounter taken right out of the monster manual. You've got your drow priest, who's basically running the show and coordinating all the bad guys. You've got your drow blade master, who's a skirmisher. He's going to be darting in and out of the battlefield to try to take out the characters one by one. You've got three drow warriors. They're lurkers, so they're going to try to skulk around and get behind the characters. And then you've got the big soldier here, the Umber Hulk, who's just in there to draw the characters to it and then beat them senseless. This is one of the encounter groups suggested in the drow entry of the book. Each monster in the monster manual has at least one sample encounter, which gives you a roster of monsters that work nicely together as an encounter. You can throw that group of monsters straight into a fight, or use it to get a good idea of how to put together a combat encounter of your own. Fourth edition makes the game easier to run for dungeon masters. When you flip through the dungeon master's guide, you see just how easy it is. Whether you're a veteran DM or entirely new to the game, you'll find advice, tips, and guidelines for doing pretty much everything you want to do. The Dungeon Master's Guide covers everything from the basics of how to be DM, to running the game, all the way to creating your own monsters and running a campaign. A D&D adventure is really just a series of encounters, and a typical encounter includes one or more challenges that the heroes must work together to overcome. That could be fighting monsters, crossing a lava-filled cavern, or getting advice from a local wizard. All of these are different kinds of encounters, and the Dungeon Master's Guide is all about helping DMs build exciting encounters to challenge the players. 
and not just battles, but role-playing encounters, traps, hazards, and other non-combat encounters. A great example is the skill challenge. In a skill challenge, the characters work together to overcome whatever problems they face using skills rather than swords and spells. It gives everyone in the party an opportunity to shine by combining clever thinking and role-playing to help tell an exciting story. For example, a good skill challenge is the urban chase, where the characters are chasing a villain through busy city streets, using skills like acrobatics, athletics, and streetwise to catch up to the villain before he gets away. That's just one small piece of what you'll find in the Dungeon Master's Guide that'll help you create exciting encounters, memorable adventures, and campaign worlds filled with detail. Add in things like dungeon tiles and miniatures, and your D&D game really comes to life. All of this is just the start of what you and your friends can bring to the table when you get together to roll some dice and have fun with 4th Edition.